it's a building I've been familiar with since I was a boy. You always walk past, so I've always been conscious of it. It's pretty interesting to get involved in a, such a well-known building. Well, it was all part of John Nash's grand scheme for the Prince Regent, which was a processional route, if you like, from Regent's Park, which was the edge of the countryside then, sort of the gateway between parkland and the developing urban London. The facade really was the, the jewel in the crown, and, that's, and it's the group value of the West Crescent and the East Crescent, and then turning the corner and extending up Portland Place to start working on that bit of heritage. And it's not every day you get to work on a Grade 1 listed building, least of all actually take it down and rebuild it, which believe me doesn't happen very often. If you look at buildings in, in London, they're, they're always in transition. But making it relevant going forward for its next period of its life is to insert a use that is current and is needed in the, in the city whilst hanging on and honouring the important bits, that the reason for the listing, and that's, that's the facade. When it comes to sustainability, I've been working on the facade packages and mostly looking at the envelope and the building physics of what we're doing. So it's about trying to retain the heat, trying to retain energy. The facade really is the thing that pretty much dictates the way we address solving the problem of, of planning the building. It's a crescent. You've got a radial pattern of grid lines that radiates out. So planning a building with you know, basically orthogonal spaces within it was pretty tricky. Every floor is different. The floor to ceiling heights change as you go up. So the proportions of the rooms that you create have to change. The rear of the building, we thought this is an opportunity to actually create that kind of dialogue between the heritage facade and, and the contemporary facade at the back. We feel that architecture should speak of its time, so we look at it in different ways on different buildings. Some are add-ons, some are interwoven, and in some cases we have um, buildings that are designed as new buildings in a historical context. And the way we do it is look at the clues in the, in the immediate context and, and with the immediate building. We look at how we take the proportions and then we often look at the architectural embellishment as well, distill that down to a contemporary interpretation of the ornate detailing that you would find on historical buildings. In this instance, we distilled it right down because we, we felt that you know, the proportioning and the solid to void ratio was sufficient to create that dialogue between the two facades. We reinstated all the front doors just as they were in Nash's design and restored the townhouse delineation with the chimney stacks so the vertical expression of the old townhouses was reintroduced. It's got new double glazing, new overcladding for the whole two buildings which brought their standards up very high. Arriving at the front of the, of, of the Crescent takes you back to the mid-19th century. The wide pavement, the double column porticos, the colonnade, entering the double doors, and the scale of the front part of the building is pretty much as it was. Behind that, of course, is a modern building, a thoroughly modern building. It agrees to all the, all the current codes and beyond, and it reintroduces residential use into the building. All the apartments, they are all different. Every one had to be addressed in its, in its own right. We've reinstated the garden, and we've gone for a leaf motif on our rear balcony balustrades which is rather a lovely design, but that alluded to the parkland. What I'm most proud of is, is um, the success of the rear facade and how, how it fits. It was a journey that um, was very exciting, but highly enjoyable. It's projects like Regent's Crescent. They are terrific jobs. Uh, and I've been lucky to have worked on a lot of those special buildings. They are, they, they are unique. There's a set history and you're becoming part of that history.